like to say a warm, warm welcome to each and every one of you to the Youth Prevention Advocacy Campaign National Launch. I'm your host for this evening. My name is Lulu Hangalawood. You can simply call me Lulu. And I am the UNAIDS Goodwill Ambassador for Zambia. Um, and we also have different representatives from the Zambia CSO self-coordination mechanism and um, lots of youth participants who are also here from across Zambia and um, we are also going to hear a presentation on the youth prevention advocacy. Please let's put our hands together for now. Thank you so much Lulu. Um, Firstly, may I just start by recognizing the presence of the United Nations Under Secretary General and UNA Executive Director, Madam Winnie Ganima, the UNA Regional Director for Eastern and Southern Africa, Madam Annie Gitupu Shongwe, the National HIV AIDS SGITB Council Director General, Dr. Connie Osborne, the UNAIDS Country Director, Dr. Tassis Barihuta, the PEPFA Zambia Country Coordinator, Daphne Williams, the Honorable Members of Parliament present here today, the United Nations representatives that are present here. Thank you so much um, to the Executive Director for coming all the way here and for sparing time to be part of this particular event. For us, the Youth Prevention Advocacy Campaign is a journey that we began last year. We were first supported by UNAIDS to implement this intervention. We piloted in Copperbell province where we had overwhelming response. And it just made sense for us to scale up and bring it up to the national level. However, just to highlight, this particular event this evening is not limited to only the, the campaign launch. We're also taking this as an opportunity for civil society to interrupt with our dignitaries here, especially the executive director that has come all the way. So we'll spend time to have that conversation with various constituencies represented here today. We saw some of those statistics, but of course, the picture is there. The infections are very high. Being the largest youth network in Zambia, we feel we need to take lead in driving the response, especially towards prevention. Closing the tap is essential. That has been our main theme for our campaign from last year. We've been talking about closing the tap of new HIV infections. We're doing great work around ensuring that people stay, get on treatment and stay on treatment. But we need to focus also a bit more around prevention. As I always say, we cannot continue mopping the floor or the tap is still running. I think those efforts as a country it becomes more and more expensive for us to manage the HIV epidemic in this country. I'm sure this is the same across the globe. For Zambian Youth Platform and this particular campaign, we have demonstrated in the past and we continue to demonstrate that young people are available, they are committed, they have the technical capacity to push this agenda of prevention, especially that affects them even more than anybody else. Adolescents are most hit, especially adolescent girls and young women. It just makes sense to take time and listen to them. Listen to what solutions they, they want you to implement. This particular platform takes pride in driving and implementing locally driven solutions. The young people around this campaign continue to actually create and design their own solutions. We are convinced that local solutions are much, much easier to implement because the locals can easily implement the solutions without necessarily needing a mentor to be paid to teach them how to implement their own preventive measures. It becomes easier, it's also cheaper, and also super sustainable, as it can and can definitely outlive any external funding mechanism, because the locals live there and they know what works for them. Have the 
technical know-how, they know what needs to be done. What is required is now the technical and financial support that comes from mostly the people are around this room, especially those that are leading these interventions, leading the funding mechanisms and driving the agenda. So once again, thank you so much. This is a big thank you to those partners that have taken the time and have decided to continue investing in young people. Not only ZYP, but investing in the different interventions that are led by the young people. That is where the solution lies. We're grateful to the partners that continue to show us the direction and continue to back us up, but they need to be on the table. They need to be placed at the center of the response, of the HIV response. If at all, we're going to achieve meaningful change that we want to see, especially among our young people. They are the only generation that is blessed to be leaders of today and tomorrow. We can't afford to mess up our tomorrow. Let's invest now onwards. So we're counting on you to continue with that commitment in investing in young people. Let's believe in them. The solution lies with them. With those few remarks, I'd like to say thank you once again for everyone who turned up, especially our ED and our delegation here. Thank you so much for sparing time to listen to the young people. Thank you. Allow me to first of all appreciate the Zambian Youth Platform for this great and timely event. I'm aware that the Youth Prevention Advocacy Campaign is an initiative championed by adolescents and young people here in Zambia. The campaign aims to raise awareness about the need to close the tap of new HIV infections. As we all know, for every HIV infection that we fail to prevent, it means one more person that needs treatment for life. Through the use of an innovative blend of demand creation and social accountability strategies, the youth prevention campaign works towards increasing access to sexual reproductive health and HIV high impact services. This campaign could not have come at a better time, as Sibu has said, because today, more than ever, literature is full of glaring data and statistics pointing to the fact that adolescents and young people aged 15 to 24 remain the hardest hit population by the epidemic. In Zambia, about 42% of all new infections are in adolescents and young people. And last year alone, we can say seven out of nine of these new infections were in females, adolescent girls and young women. So, other than placing blame on adolescents and young people, ours as NAC is a call to find lasting solutions to this state of affairs. Therefore, I would like to offer our unbridled support to this very important national campaign led by the young people in Zambia themselves. The Global AIDS Strategy 2021 to 2026. And by the way, through the National AIDS Council, Zambia participated at all levels of its development. This strategy has identified two key measures to address new infections. First, the need to maximize access to HIV AIDS related services, which include knowledge and information, citing the lack of common knowledge, especially in rural areas. Secondly, the importance of breaking down barriers that have hindered progress in the fight against HIV AIDS. For example, the age of consent with regard to the stages at which young people can access sexual reproductive uh, health and rights services, including HIV testing. Masters of Ceremony Lulu, in Zambia, the national HIV policy has been undergoing review, which hopefully will be concluded by July this year. The policy recognizes that if, HIV, if the HIV epidemic is to be successfully halted, urgent action is needed on three fronts. 
First, enhancing HIV prevention measures for adolescents and young people in all their diversity in an effort to close the tap of new infections. I applaud Madam Winnie uh, to add this very important constituency to her very busy agenda. Uh, the combination of CSOs and youth uh, speak volumes to her focus and indeed the key to closing the tap on new HIV infections. Further, I'd like to applaud and thank the Zambia National Youth Platform for leading the organization of this event as well and, in, and even more important to launch the Youth Prevention Advocacy Campaign. This youth-led and youth-owned initi initiative this, uh, is timely and needed for closing the tap. As PEPFAR, we have recognized the critical importance of adolescents and young people and CSOs in the achievement of the UNAIDS 95-95-95 epidemic control goals. And I thank you for your part and leadership and challenge and questions and demands and asking more questions and why can't we, why shouldn't we, why don't we, in developing COP22. That's how we do it, we do it together, and I sincerely thank you for your time, your energy, and your, per and your participation. As Sibu said earlier, locally owned and locally led solutions is what we need to end the pandemic in Zambia. Once again, allow, allow me to applaud this launch and to applaud Madame Winnie for taking the time to demonstrate and in fact lead the importance that uh, AYP, adolescents and young people, and CSOs have and that they are critical to ending the HIV pandemic. Once again, thank you so much. again. Um, first of all, I'd love to apologize that we go, I got to this event quite late. But as you might know, Parliament is sitting today. And for those that are watching Parliament TV, it was actually very heated. But I knew that is, this is an event that I couldn't miss. So I had to... I had to run back home, do a quick change so that I can suit the environment. Otherwise, if I'd come the way I was in Parliament, <laughs> yeah, so that I would attend this. So we are very, very thankful to our donors that continue to support us, the champions, female parliamentarian champions that are also champions, championing this. Uh, so as, as she was speaking, I'm taken aback. I'm the only female parliamentarian in the whole of Western province. No, it shouldn't be a wow. <laughs> should be a shame uh, because at the end of it all what we are saying is that a woman succeeding should not be out of this world it should be a norm a woman should be a and for us to be able to succeed is also us taking advantage and closing that tap that's why i'm very very passionate about this and for those that know western province the province that i come from has the highest teenage pregnancies in the whole of Zambia, which is a shame. Um, and one of the things that I've learned as we talk about these things is the information gap that exists between children that are growing up in the urban, urban areas and those that are growing up in the rural areas. The information gap is so wide. So I'm taking this opportunity also to speak to our partners that are there. Please go out in those rural areas because these children who also benefit from these dogs that we are having, it will be nice next time to see a very, very nice me meeting being held in Mwanti. Where I come from, where I have a lot of teenage pregnancies, and also that comes with a high uh, HIV uh, rate. And many people who are carrying the virus 
things look like everybody else, they are not sick. So it's a confusing time for young people. Young people, why should they be aware? Where is the danger? They don't see it, but yet it is there. So I thank you, I start by congratulating you young people for taking that responsibility, for coming into this space and wanting to raise the alarm and keep the fight on. So thank you so much. Thank you. And again, for women, there's been a movement, a women's rights movement out there fighting on a range of issues of women's rights. But again, that movement, the voice about HIV as a violation of the rights of women and girls, the risk, the higher vulnerability being really driven by violations of girls and women's rights, that voice hasn't been sharp. We want it, we want it to be very sharp. So non-discrimination, that is something we must push for. Non-discrimination, the right to health for all, the right to access prevention, to access treatment, that is what will close the tap. So I've said several things. One, thank you for standing out to be spokespersons to speak about prevention. Our young people need to know because they are born at a time when it's not visible. It is there, it's not visible. So thank you for being the champions to warn, prevent. Secondly, we must challenge social norms that discriminate, that promote stigma, that make a woman less equal, that promote, that tolerate by social norms. Third, we must challenge, call for policies and uh, laws a call for the removal of policies and laws that discriminate. This is so important. This is what I have to say to you for today. Honorable Member of Parliament, thank you for coming. I think we should give her a cheer when there's a legislature. Yes. We need more of them on our side. We need to engage with policymakers and legislators to understand what we seek from the law and from policies. And thank you for being on our side. Okay, thank you all. I want to thank our organizers of these events, our country director, Tarsis. Over there, Tarsis and your team, thank you so much. I want to thank the PEPFA coordinator. Thank you for your support for this work in this country. Without the support of the United States government, I'm telling you, in this country, in the rest of Africa, we would be in trouble. They are really major funders of our HIV response. And, and, and thank you, our, the, the director of the National AIDS Council. Thank you for the work we've done together this week. And thank you all. God bless you. Now I'd like to call upon the youth representative who's going to be giving um, a vote of thanks. Distinguished invited guests, all protocol highly observed. Ladies and gentlemen, let me begin by saying a huge thank you for supporting the region of adolescent health in Dawa that happened between the 8th and 9th of April 2022 at Mika Convention Center, which was graced by the Honorable Minister of Health. As the young people, we really appreciate the, te the timely technical and financial support that you have been rendering towards adolescent and young people's health. The youth prevention advocacy campaign could not have come at a better time than this. Distinguished invited guests, let me assure you that gone are the days when young people would shun away from matters affecting us. 
we have the technical know-how, the willingness, the energy, and the passion to deliver the much-needed capacity in the prevention of HIV. What we need is a space at the table, and we're not asking, we are demanding. We would also appreciate the continuous financial support from all of you, our partners, in closing the tap on your HIV infections among adolescents and the young people. The civil society to continue to engage us. I'm with my colleagues from UNICEF, they are here We're from UNESCO, and we, we also engage at the agencies as we have now the doors open. We have the constituency, the different committees in the parliament so that we can work together to achieve ending AIDS in Zambia by 2030. And um, we know you'll be watching us on social media and what we are doing. Since we did promise, this will be heavily also a social media campaign. So let's not forget to tweet, YouTube, TikTok, whatever it is you can and share what has happened today that the national launch of the ZYP campaign has uh, been officially launched. Um, remember to use the hashtag. What is the hashtag? Close the tab, ending aim, okay? Thank you so much.